Welcome to episode 124 of the Fully In It podcast. Okay, I have some quick questions for you. Have you ever thought about quitting caffeine and wondered why even when you drink a bunch of coffee, you can still feel really tired in the afternoons? Or have you ever wondered like, oh my gosh, is it possible for me to show up the way I want as a mom, run a business and focus on my health? You know, sometimes we feel like we have to choose between all three of those. And also, do you ever feel like in the online industry that there is just a lot of noise and sometimes it's distracting from the life that you actually want to live with your family and not the one that's just getting sold to you on social media. If you answered yes to any of those questions, you are going to love today's conversation. I have health consultant for six and seven figure entrepreneurs, Tanessa Shears, on the podcast. And Tanessa and I met in 2021. We were in the same business mastermind and I just fell in love with her right away like her her energy her spirit uh, her optimism I was like this is someone I could totally see becoming friends with and over the last few years Tanessa and I have had some really great conversations about entrepreneurship motherhood travel investing and on today's episode, you're going to get to peek into what a conversation looks like between two peers who are both growing successful online businesses. Tanessa is a self-proclaimed biohacker, which means she is really interested in all the intricacies and the science behind how your body functions most optimally. She loves helping entrepreneurs increase their energy because she knows that when your energy levels are at their max, that you are capable of growing your business in the way that you want without sacrificing your health in the process. So let's go ahead and dig in to this episode. I know that you are just going to love it and you're gonna take so much away from it. Welcome to Fully In It, a show for moms who are called to grow themselves while growing their families. Join me, Kate Saffel, a life and a business coach for moms, a homeschooling mama of three, and a woman on a quest to show that our lives become even more meaningful when we remember why we are here and what truly matters most. This show is about going fully in it for you and the people you love by showing up powerfully in motherhood, entrepreneurship, in your home life, and for your family vision. Join me for weekly episodes that will inspire you to live intentionally and by your values, to slow down and truly be present to your family life, to make decisions that grow a profitable business without sacrificing anything in the process, and to become the kind of mom and woman you know you're meant to be in this lifetime. So today I am so incredibly thrilled to have Tanessa Shears joining me on the Fully In It podcast. Tanessa, you and I go way back. We met several years ago, right? In a, in a business mastermind. And it is such an honor to have you on the show today to share more of your wisdom and we can like dive deeper into who you are, your business and how you do what you do both as a mom and a CEO. So for those who don't know you yet, but they're going to get to know you so much better, will you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you? Yeah. So I'm a health consultant and I help entrepreneurs double their energy and their focus, not only so that they can make more money in their business, but so that they have the energy to live their life outside of their business. There's literally nothing worse than feeling like you're dragging through your day having trouble getting started. And then you, you close down your computer at the end of the day and you want to go spend some time with your kids, but you are so exhausted. And I've had clients say to me, it's like, I just default to Netflix because it's all I have the energy for. And it's not, I'm choosing mm -hmm. Netflix because I want to watch something with my kids. It's like, that's literally all I have the brain power for. And, you know, you just feel like I could be moving ahead on these projects a little faster. I wouldn't be getting so distracted. I wouldn't be feeling this brain fog. If I could just have more energy, if I could just 
feel a little more focused. So that's my jam. And I come in with, you know, wearable tech and I come in with um, like sleep optimization and food and all that kind of stuff and get your brain fully upgraded so that it can act as the best asset in your business. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. And you know, I am an avid follower of yours. Like the whole biohacking thing is so cool. And I love how you apply that directly to entrepreneurship, right? And you kind of like marry the two. So tell me, like, how did you actually get to where you are today? Like what inspired or led you to even start your business? It was interesting. I, um, I always kind of loved the growth side of things. And so I found myself at like a mini meeting and it was a financial one. Like she was teaching us about, you know, uh, compound interest and stuff like that. And I remember saying to her, I was like, oh yeah, I I love all this stuff. And she's like, you know, why don't you go start your own business? And in my head, I was like, that's for people in their forties. I remember thinking that at the time I was like 20 years old. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't know anybody my age running a business. Mm -hmm. And in your head, when you're 20, everyone that owns a business is like older. Right. And so I was like, she said to me, she goes, you know, Tanessa, you live at home right now. You are never going to have such an opportunity to fail with no consequence. You don't have a mortgage. You don't Mm -hmm. have a car payment. Like you literally can experiment and do what you love. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. So then I opened a personal training business because I was already (laughs) teaching group fitness. So I got certified And, you know, just like being on the floor and interacting with people, like my business grew very quickly at the point. And then, so from there, it got to the point um, about two years in where I was seeing about 33 client hours a week, which is a lot when you look at marketing and backend. And there came the point where I was like, Hmm, I wonder if I should like check out this online thing because I feel like I could better leverage my time and help more people. And so then 2015, that kind of started the transition into the slow transition into where I am now. Really? Wow. So as far back as 2015, see, for some reason I was thinking it was later than that, but you've been in the game for a long time. Oh yeah. I, uh, I always get a good giggle when I come across an old sales page. Like my business has gone through so many iterations yes. went from personal trainer to like my, I had a program called like busy women getting fit for the longest time and like, I love you it. Know, and weight loss yes. coaching and then life oh coaching. Gosh. And then I was just like, when I had my first baby, I was like, oh no, no, no. We need to pay more attention to sleep because this is yeah. severely impacting my business. And after, you know, applying it to myself and working with a couple of willing family members, I was like, okay, I'm willing to help mm. other people. With this. this made a huge difference. Right. Yeah. So I think what's really cool about what you said there is that you recognize all of the different iterations of your business and how it has evolved and changed over time to get you here, which I feel like you know, I will hear like from my clients or in my community, like they're afraid of getting things wrong. They feel like I need to have it figured out and like, I need to set it. And this is who I am business-wise forever and always. And then inevitably something shifts in them, how they want to serve their people. And then they start feeling bad making those changes. Right. So like, I'm really curious, how did you navigate that yourself? Like, how did you hold yourself through the decisions to change your business model over time? Yeah, well, I know when it went from personal training, I remember I was thinking like, I can't do this if I want to have kids one day. And at that point, Mm -hmm. I was still like five years out from having kids, but I was like, how can I transition this? And so one of the things that really helped was I used to do five days a week of personal training. And so what I did was I went down to four and replaced Mm -hmm. one of those days with online clients. And it took me five years to fully transition (gasps) to online. And I wanted it to be something where I wasn't stressed about my income. It was nice and slow, but I mean, at each of those, even transitions of what the online business looked like. And I will tell you, I made very few sales. My first year was $554. I think my second year was $10,000. Yes. Like it was a nice slow climb, but because I wasn't worried about the income, It was just such a gift to be able to experiment. And I had many programs that sold at zero because I was learning. I hired $14,000 worth of an ad expert that resulted in zero sales. Like you feel that you make the mistakes along (laughs) the way. Right. But, um, I think one of the things that the hardest parts to navigate, and a lot of it was just coaching my own mindset is like, well, what about the people I'm leaving behind? Like when I went from to life coaching, 
to health optimization for entrepreneurs. I was like, what about yes. the people on my list that were mm. here? Weight loss tricks. And now I'm speaking to entrepreneurs. Like, are they going to feel like I abandoned them? And yes. I think really recognizing also that a lot of my same podcast listeners are those weight loss clients and are those people? Because what I speak to is, I mean, they can find relevance in it if they choose to look for, for sure. It. Sleep is sleep. Food is food. But I think it's really coming to terms with the fact that they can still be served if they choose. And if not, there's probably someone who is yes. really excited to talk about weight loss <laughs> that they yeah. will want to follow instead of me because I don't want to look at food journals yeah. anymore. And that's just yeah. not me anymore. <laughs> like I'm over yeah. it. <laughs> well, and also like, you know, if you're hiring a coach, a trainer, um, someone in that capacity, you don't want someone who uh, doesn't like what they're doing anymore. You want someone who's passionate about the topic. And so, you know, if you're listening to this and you are an entrepreneur, maybe you're feeling burnt out in your area and you've been telling yourself, no, I got to stick it through and keep going. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to serve your people better, right? Because you'll be happier, you'll be more passionate, and then they will feel that as well. And then the second thing I wanted to note here is that you said it took you five years, five years. So I feel like in the online business world, we've all been conditioned to like, 100k months or yeah 100k months in five months and like I see these reels all the time and I'm like okay this is not the reality for most people but now you have an insanely successful online business so would you say like was it worth it putting in those years yeah, because it's interesting. My aunt said something to me back. She really wanted me to go to medical school and I highly considered yeah. it while I was doing my undergrad. And she goes, you know, Tanessa, the time is going to pass anyways. So when you're 30 years old, you may have gone through medical school and you could be a doctor. Instead, that time is going to pass anyways. I'm like, I didn't go down that route. However, I applied that yeah. same thought to this. It's like the time is going to pass anyways. So when I'm 30, when I'm 35, when I'm 40, like that yeah. time is going to pass. What do I, do I want to be in this business for the long haul? And then also, I mean, having kids changes everything. Right. And it really sure just does has a lot of shifts around a lot of the messaging of like 20 K months, 10 K months. And I'm like, what about travel? What about spending time with your kids? And I was like, just feeling this really weird. Like I don't fit in with a lot of the marketing oh, that I'm yes. right now. I'm just like, can we not oh. talk about like, what do you want to achieve the travel goals you want or the family goals you want or the whatever it is? And then what do you need to make to have that? And then if that works, why can't that be enough? And I'm still struggling yes. with like, like not telling myself that I need to hit 500K, that I need to hit a million because I'm so seeing that everywhere, but really coming to terms with like, this works. And if I yes. don't grow anymore, I have a yeah. great life ahead of me. Oh my gosh. You totally do. Right. And same here. I still resonate with everything that you're saying. And I think a lot of the women in this community who are going to be listening to this are probably like fists in the air right now because we're tired of that narrative. Because I think at the end of the day, when we're just going for those externals, like the money numbers, we know that that doesn't satisfy. Money is just a vehicle for the life that we want to live. So if you don't actually know what it is you want for your life, you're going to get to those 10K or 20K or a million K months. But will you be happy, right? Will you feel fulfilled? Will you love your life when you get there? And that's what I really admire about you, Tanessa, is that you go for the whole life experience and you guys have travel on your horizon, right? Like, yeah, it was, yeah, it, it came back. I, I had, I had a coaching experience in December and I was really struggling with this idea of like, I want to grow, but I want to be so present. Like my kids are one yeah. in three right now. Right. And he said to me, Tanessa, are you growing just to grow? And not like, I was like, oof. He's like, when yeah. is the last time you've just been like, okay with where you are without that incessant need for yes. more, more clients, bigger months, like and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am growing just to grow. And then my husband asked me a question. He's like, you yeah. know, Tanessa, when we're, when we're like in Asia doing our traveling in a couple of years from now, yeah. how are you going to do a full book of client calls? One right. on one calls when the time zone difference is 15 hours from where I am now. Yes. And like, that I call my third life crisis. It happened right before I turned 34. And I was like, <laughs> lucky I, was like, I need to re everything needs to pivot. And I like literally 
burned it to the ground, mm-hmm. built my whole business yes. back up over the last seven months, looking five years down the road oh and being like, dude, if this takes me a year to learn how to sell this new pivoted yes. offer, it's the same content, but it's a pivoted offer. I'm like, for if sure. It takes me a year, but I'm able to run yeah. this from anywhere in the world and still provide the same level of value. I was like, let's go. So here I am again. Yes. The time's going to pass anyways. What it am I is. Yeah. For, oh my gosh. Such wise words. Right. And it's really speaks to the testament of staying power, that commitment, no matter what, you know, I think again, there is this like fallacy in the online business world that it's always up and up and up and up and up, but businesses change and shift. Our client bases evolve our the type of offers we want to host are going to change. And sometimes you have to reground in your values and remember, why am I actually doing this instead of getting caught up in the competitive nature that can be so present, you know, in the online world. And I'm guilty of that as well. I was getting coached on that this morning. I was like, I'm just feeling so competitive with this other person. And it was like, okay, wait a second. Is that even what I want? can we even compare our lives? And the answer is no, like it's my own unique journey and you're creating yours as well, Tanessa. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. One of the biggest things I've always learned from watching you and your example is how much fun you have with your offers. Like I felt like it was drilled into my brain, one offer to a million. (laughs) Yes. Like I still fight that. And then I look over and I'm like, Kate's having fun and she's got like four different things and there's people that love all of them and there's people that hate all of them. And like, I think she's having more fun than me. And I'm always like, Tessa, have more fun. And so that's (laughs) always what I look to you is like, break the mold, stop trying to comply to what that big voice in our industry is like, you need 10K months, you need 20K months, you need one offer, you need this, this, and this. But like watching you has always been that reminder Mm. for me. Oh, I love hearing that so much. And just so you know, full transparency, I get into that as well, where I'm like, oh, I should really just have one offer. If I was doing this right, I would only have one offer. And even with my own clients and my membership, you know, at the very beginning, I'm like, just learn how to sell one offer. Right. But then when you get to a certain stage in your business where I think you and I are, um, come on, like if we aren't having fun, why are we doing this? Right? You know, like if we don't let ourselves play in our business, are we going to play in our real lives? Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head with that. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear about your travel plans and how you are planning to integrate business life with toddlers and going places. I'd be lying if I wasn't scared <laughs> about traveling. <laughs> yes. With a one-year-old or a sure. two-year-old. Like I already am like, how do you tote around two car seats and your luggage and all of this? Like I'm already yeah. like, what do you do on like an eight hour flight with a baby? Like, so these are the things yes. that my brain is solving, but essentially like what we're doing right now is when we had this kind of life redesign, one of the things that we thought about was I'm very spreadsheety. <laughs> You've known that I about me. I kind of know this about you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I do <laughs> like your love language, and, and good numbers and all of this stuff. And so we have a constant budget. We're very aware of what our expenses are every month. Mm. And we had this thought it was September of 2021. I think it was the September before our, our second yeah. baby was born. And we had this moment where we, in the spreadsheet, clicked on my husband's income and clicked delete just to see Boom. what would happen. Mm. And I was like, between my business and mm-hmm. some of the investments that we were in, I was like, yeah, we can do this. We can Hell do yeah. this. And I was like, and at the time I was like, if I'm only running my business three days a week right now, three half days, I was like, oh my gosh, if he's home, I could do like four full days. And that would take such a difference. And so he's actually been out of his, he had a nine to five. He was a mechanic at Lexus and he's been out for, uh, yeah, he's been out for 13 months now. And we've been fine. And so then naturally you're like, well, he's independent of location. I'm independent of location. So we have decided that four months of every year, we're going to live somewhere else in the world. We're going to do slow living. We're going to take our life 
as it is now and move it to a different country, do immersive experiences in the culture, get to oh like know the food and where the, who yeah. works at the local stores. So we're our first one actually is in January of this next year, 2024, we'll be in Panama for two months that we've got. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we are excited. A lot of, lot of nerves and planning and unknown. Well, yeah, and like, of course. Yeah. But as far as business goes, like it's a three hour time difference from where I am now that totally works. I yeah. it's a nice transition where I'm like figuring out how it all works, but I mean, I've realized I can run my business in 20 hours a week or less at this point when you it's keep huge. getting more and more efficient. And I'm like, I could do that. And that yeah. still leaves a lot of time for play. Yes. Right. I mean, you have so much more life that you can live when you can have your business compartmentalized in that small of a block of time. Um, that was our experience when we were traveling full time. I mean, I would just work like half days. And then we would go hike, we'd go play, we'd go explore. And it's so fulfilling. You know, if you're into that, like slow living life, like you are right, you get to slow down, you get to be present you get to appreciate what you've created instead of like, no, I've got to hustle harder and harder and harder. And you never get anywhere because you're always looking too far ahead. Right. Well, I think part of it was really looking at like my nature is grow to grow. I mean, I think it's probably like. I've been very conditioned that way. And it also, I like it. Like, it's not even somebody told me I like growing. Yes, Having two months there, it's like, okay, well, what if this is a season of rest? What if this is a season of reaping what I've sowed? Mm. And if I do this four months of the year, then I can grow confidently and without worrying about anything while I'm here and then fully just let go while I'm there and like Mm. really kind of find that ebb and flow. I think that's going to make things feel a lot better than just that constant pursuit of more. Oh my gosh. I am so excited for you. And I cannot wait to just see how this shifts your family and your business, but more importantly, like just getting to see you savor having this life that you have created that you so intentionally laid the groundwork for. Right. Well, and I thought like, what a cool opportunity that I have the option to give the girls to be schooled by the world, different languages, cultures, people who are raised different with different beliefs, foods, like what a way to be exposed to, you know, how beautiful every, all the different people are in the world and experiences and languages and stuff like that. Yes. Do you follow world schooling family? We plan on doing world schooling. We're like, yeah, but do you follow fa- you follow that account? Yes. We're on the Facebook groups. We're heavy in the Facebook okay. groups. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You definitely because it's it's on Instagram. It's World Schooling Family is like the actual account. And it's Kirk's old life coach, Greg Denning, is the one. And they've got like, I want to say like nine kids. Wow. And yeah, and they went through like 17 countries over the last six months. That's and incredible. then they, they just bought a home base in Portugal. That's see so. Portugal's on our list. Yeah. Well, let I'm me, actually, let there's me a lot of places I can't get yeah. there fast enough. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you have that like travel bug hundred percent, like, right. There's just always like that next place on the list, but it makes life exciting. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, like, I'm really curious and I know this is something the women in my, in my community love hearing we're all like kind of nosy we want to know like what does an actual day look like for you as a mom as a CEO you've got a one-year-old and a three-year-old like what's the day what's that look like I have three styles of days (laughs) Um, tell us because like I feel like it's so weird we talk about uh, morning routines and stuff like that yeah when I've worked with my clients they always are like they feel like they have to be locked into like it's wake up and exercise every day it's wake up and work every day and I'm like no 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 different speeds for different days yes so I have two call days per week and on those days I really focus on getting up in the morning and we're natural early birds we're up by five in our house I think much like you guys are sometimes yes yeah Yeah, the lion right (laughs) Yes, definitely. Uh, So one of the things that I like to do on those mornings is nurture my energy. So if I am on four, five, six calls, my energy Mm -hmm. needs to be up. So I'm really focusing on things in the morning of like, how can I use light and how can I use temperature and how can I use uh, caffeine timing and all of these things to have a very high energy day to be on calls. So I really focus on a morning routine, so to speak on the call days. Now, two days a week, I also wake up and I'm on my computer within 15 minutes because Mm -hmm. I am most creative in the morning. So those are the days where I write 
my newsletter, I create content. I brainstorm podcast ideas. Yeah. So those are the four days that I work. And the other three days you'll find me curled up with a book in the sun, yeah. listening yes. to music. Like those are my days where I have more flowy mornings. Mm. I'm like doing very, what I feel like are feminine things, like reconnecting yeah. with that energy so that I have different yes. speeds. And like right oh. now I have them alternated so that I do one early morning creative day, yes. one call day, a flowy day. And then I go Ugh. a call day, a flowy day, or a call day, a work day, two flowy days. So it's very, Oh my like, gosh. I love it. It never needs to be the say case yes. of the Mondays for me, because I'm like, by the time I'm ready to jump back into the call day, it's been you're, a couple yes, days. You're ready. I'm not going to get creative. It's been for a couple sure. days. By the time it's weekend, I'm like, I'm ready for this. So mm. it's kind of just made like every day I look forward to because of the cadence that I've set get variety. And there's that permission piece, because I think that's been drilled in a lot of us of like, no, your days need to look exactly the same or you won't build the habit. Right. Yeah. And I think like there's some mornings that I really want to have breakfast with the girls. And then there's some yeah. days I want to have lunch and there's some days I want to go for walks. And so yeah. instead of deciding to, you know, shoehorn everything in, in the right way at the right day, it's just, no, there are days for this and there are days for that and be present in this and be present in that. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Can we dig a little bit deeper into some of these biohacking things that you do in your routine? Cause you've got a very alternative view on coffee that I've picked up on and I'm super <laughs> naughty with my coffee in the morning. I've been trying to wait. I'll let you explain it, but yeah. Yeah. So this is something that I have paid like you know, those things where it's like, you know, them to be true, but you don't want them to be true. So you kind yes. of pretend they aren't there, but then when you do them, you're like, dang it, I should have done this a while ago. Yes. That is my view on, on copy. So I'll just give you the, the little idea. So one of the hacks that I do is I delay my first cup of coffee an hour and a half to two hours after I wake up. So here's why. When you're ready to go to bed at night and you feel nice and tired, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of this molecule called adenosine in your brain. That's why you get tired. When you sleep, all this adenosine gets cleared out right? So you wake up in the morning, and you feel alert, but if you have coffee right when you wake up, that adenosine doesn't get to fully clear out and, but the caffeine yeah. kicks in. So you feel alert and you're oh. great. But when that caffeine wears off mid afternoon, yes. that adenosine is waiting there for you Ooh. and you feel the punch of that afternoon yeah. energy drop off. So as hard as it is to like get into that routine of having something else in your hand in the morning and doing something else. Like it's one of those hacks that I feel like there's not many like instant benefits yeah. in yes. the health industry. Like, you know, you have to eat well for a while before you really start feeling the effects of it. Oh, yeah. you have to exercise. But this is one of those things where a day or two, you really start noticing like that mitigation of that slump in the afternoon. Wow. No way. Okay. Well, that's, that's very encouraging to me. I am, I have gotten up to about 45 minutes. So I'm like working my way. <laughs> I saw you post about it on Instagram and I'm like that Tanessa, she's going to ruin my morning coffee routine. Um, but I secretly, you know, I love all of this stuff and I definitely notice the difference too of if I am drinking my coffee, as soon as I wake up, I am really wanting an afternoon iced coffee. Yes. Right? I can't get through. Yeah. Well, and the worst part is, is then when we go for the second cup of coffee, it's yeah. usually a little too close to bed because we want to yes. leave 10 to 12 hours. And yeah. even if we're like, but I fell asleep, it doesn't mean that the quality, the deep, the REM, the architecture of your sleep right. is not affected. And so you wake up the next morning feeling like I need a coffee first thing. And it's like that Ugh. cycle that you have to break. Right. Mm. But that that's one thing. The other thing that I've been experimenting heavily with lately is, mm. um, making sure that when I have my first coffee of the day, it is with food because of yeah. how it helps balance our cortisol specifically because yes. coffee on an empty stomach, if you're already predisposed to stress, yeah, it can wreak havoc on, on your, not only your sleep, but just your daily. And if you're in that last two weeks of your menstrual cycle, you're going to feel yeah. it a lot more too. So been wow. waiting. And the hard thing is for me, that's like a three hour, four hour wait after I wake up. So being yeah. busy helps. I tell you in the morning, not just sitting there, like thinking about how much you miss your coffee. Well, yeah. So then you're kind of fasting as well, right? Like, so if you're pushing your coffee back to wait for breakfast with your family. Yes. That that's what I'm, I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Yeah. We, we do like a moderate fasting window. We really sleep yeah. eat around eight and then we wrap up dinner around six, Yeah, I would say. So it's a 10 hour window. It's kind of one of yeah. those things that's not an intentional thing. It's just that 
what works. The baby wakes up at eight. That's kind of when we all gather together. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I find we are late breakfast eaters. Like we're awake, but we're doing other things. The kids are reading books. I'm journaling. And then by the time everyone's hungry, we've all been awake like two hours. Yeah. And I think the most important thing is like this, the consistency of that time. Yeah. It's that variation from hour to hour of breakfast that you'll find will really kind of mess with your morning energy because your body's like, oh, interesting. we didn't get food. Okay. Let's move on to like brain stuff. And then you're like, okay, yeah. now food coming, hold on brain. We're going to go back to digesting here. We'll do this. Okay. Now we're back to the brain. And you're going to find that you're getting that like yes. post, that postprandial, that after meal shift in energy focus. So I really like wow. to be as it's more about consistency of timing than yeah. the time. Yes. Okay. Can we flip to the end of the day? Because yeah. also I know the moms who are listening to this, so many of them struggle with sleep. They can't go to sleep. They have anxious racing thoughts. They're on their phones. They're Netflixing. Yeah. What do you got for them? Yeah. So I think it's one of those, <laughs> those things that we really have to just recognize that how much our sleep impacts the rest of our lives, our mood, yeah. how we show up as parents, our ability to focus on our business, how efficient our brain works, our decision-making ability, like so much is nurtured in that. And mm -hmm. one of the things I find most common with parents is, but if I go, I put the kids down and if I go to sleep right away, where's my me time? Like I have been That's, business. Yeah. I have been mom. Yes. So like, if I cut that out, where's my me time? And yeah. I find that that is the thing we have to solve for. And one of the things I always like to offer is, okay, cool. I get it. What are you filling your me time with right now? And it's usually like, well, I'm scrolling Pinterest or I'm on my phone yeah. or I'm on Netflix. Right. And here, when I say this, there's nothing wrong with those. I do them yeah. all. However, remember we talked about at the beginning, it's like what we're defaulting to, because it's all we have the energy for, for when sure. you're finding those things you're choosing and you're just like, I'm so exhausted. I just need to escape for a little bit. And we're like, okay, well, cool. Let's say you're watching Netflix. Is that, how, how, how are you feeling when you're done with that? And they're like, I'm still tired. I'm like, cool. What do you want to feel during your me time? And often I'll get things like recharged or refreshed yeah. or I feel, want to feel relaxed or I want to feel just like I had some time to rest. And yes. I was like, cool. Is what you're doing giving you that? Yeah. And the, yeah. if the answer is no, then right. that's the invitation to introduce some of those activities. So let's say you have an hour and a half after your kids go to bed. What if you watched one episode and mm -hmm. then paired that with something that actually gave you the feeling you want? Maybe mm. disconnecting from tech. Instead, we're reading a book. Maybe you're yeah. sitting out on the deck. I know I have a client who likes to late evening garden. I mean, it's late right, late <laughs> right now, but like, you know what I mean? Like that's those awesome. are the things that fulfill you yeah. and being able to, I, I like to think of it as turning off input from other people's brains, phones, podcasts, sure. TV, all of that, turning that off and spending some time giving, doing things that give you the feeling you want to do. And what you'll start noticing is you don't need yeah. four hours of Netflix because you only seeked out four hours because you still needed more me time because you never got the feeling that yes. you thought you were going to get. So yes. maybe don't take out the Netflix, maybe don't take out the phone, but right. maybe start inserting some in lieu of the extended amount of time. And then you'll probably yeah. find that you go take an hour before bed to read or, you know, do your skin treatment or whatever like that. You're going to find, you're going to sleep a lot better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that so much because I think it's so easy to just default to what's in reach of my hand, my phone, the remote, you know, mm -hmm. but what you said about unplugging from other people's minds and their thoughts, especially for those of us who are entrepreneurs, like we are thought leaders. Um, you know, we, we make our living by leading others, but how can we lead if we're always following mm, and yeah. we don't create any space for the inspiration to drop in. And I don't know about you, Tanessa, but I notice when I'm way too plugged in, um, my inspiration is like just dried up and I have to intentionally unplug, get out in nature, do these things. And then the flow comes back in. Yes. Yeah. I think it's allowing space to hear your own thoughts and feel your own yeah. feelings. Like, right. But it was interesting. Um, about three weeks ago, I had a reel go viral and it was like in yeah. the half million real viral oh my range. Gosh. Yeah. And so I was trying to like ride the wave of that respond to comments, you know, yes, and give me, for sure. I'm like, this is, these experiences don't come around very often. Mm -hmm, so let's mm -hmm. ride this. Um, but I found that I was allowing myself to check in over my weekends just to keep the mm. momentum going. And that For lasted sure. two yeah. weeks after that had passed, I found I was like on edge. I was a little antsy. Like I felt like oh. bees buzzing in me and I'm like, 
I haven't like given myself a break, yes. but I was like, even though it was a, for a reason, I can see how much and how quickly that affected me. Yeah. And so when you can start to see that it's always that plugged in, whether even honestly, right. if it's a podcast you're listening to, it is still input. You are constantly deciding, yep. do I agree with this? What do I want to think about this? Should I implement right. this? Like, what does this mean about yeah. my life? Like we're constantly evaluating, integrating information, but when you don't give yourself that time away from that, you feel that kind of like, <laughs> I just can't quite relax. And then that's yep. when we're like, this feels terrible. You know, what doesn't make me feel this Netflix and there <laughs> begins the cycle right? Yes. You're so right. Oh my gosh. So we have to bring intentionality to the cycle, have that awareness. Like this is what's happening. And I want to choose differently. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you are so big into the biohacking world. It's what I love about you. Cause I have like a secret love affair with all of this kind of stuff, right? Like I'm going to totally take an ice bath when I'm like feeling kind of low energy, or I'm going to go to the infrared sauna or whatever, like you and I, I think are kindred spirits you've definitely got a leg up. This is like your expertise. I would love to hear from you either like what bothers you about the industry, what you wish people understood about biohacking, what you would love to see as different. Yeah. I, mean, I think there's two things. One is there's sometimes an association that biohacking comes with a lot of expenses, cryotherapy, oh, yeah. fancy gadgets, um, oh, like a uh, fancy sleep curtains, a certain mattress pads, like, yes, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of tech and it can be, but there's also a ton of free options. And I think when we really start to like, let that be a limiter, then we don't get to explore all the stuff that is free. And I think the other thing that I hear about biohacking is like, what people are like, what is the difference between just like being healthy and participating in biohacking? Right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, for sure. Right? Cause like, how would you know the difference? I mean, isn't good sleep just healthy? How is that yeah. biohacking? Right. And the way I like to think about biohacking and how is it is different is we are thinking about this as you being the experiment of one, and we are making intentional changes to your external environment. Think how dark is your bedroom? What temperature mm -hmm. is your room? Things like that while you're sleeping, external environment and internal environment. What are we eating? How are we sleeping? Are we moving? Yeah. And we're making those intentional changes to see if it had an effect and if we want to keep it or not. Whereas yeah. I think like eat healthy, sure. How do you know it's for you? So I love to integrate wearable trackers, honestly, whether that be a Fitbit or my favorites, the Aura Ring, mm -hmm. but I'm always looking for, okay, what I'm doing right now, you know, I told you I was doing a uh, coffee with breakfast, right? I'm specifically watching the metric of heart rate variability. That's the measure yeah. of the Stress on my body. Does my HRV go up when I'm consistent with this? That means is my body in less stress wow. when I do this? And I'm watching for a period of two to three weeks. And at the end of two to three weeks, I will decide, do I feel better? Are my metrics showing that that worked for me? If yes, I keep it. If no, I discard it and I try something new. So I know yeah. that every habit that I invest my time into works for me, I'm not doing what somebody on Instagram told me to do because it might work. Or I'm always looking at like, yeah. did I actually feel a difference? Because there's so much health advice. Biohacking really right. takes it back to, we're looking at longevity. We're looking at energy. We're looking at clarity all through the lens of what personally works for you and is not a general health recommendation. Ooh. Yeah. So really it's bringing it back to you and paying attention to how these things impact you on a micro level, maybe on like a, a more grand level of how it's impacting you and your roles, your relationships, your energy, your sleep. How, yeah. Right. It's kind of like your business. So cool. There's no strategy yeah. that you can just blanket put on somebody else's business. Yeah. Right. It's going to take tweaks. And I think the, the reason biohacking resonate so strongly with entrepreneurs is it's about return on investment. That's what yeah. your business is, is if yes. I put my time into this podcast, these ads, this style of content, am I getting a return of some form, either nurturing yeah. my audience? Is it a monetary return? Am I, my follower count growing? Is my community getting bigger? Right. It, our brains work in return on investment and that is biohacking. So in essential, you're really taking your strength as an entrepreneur and taking that skill and transferring it over to your mm. health. Yeah. 
That's so amazing. I love that so much. Okay. So for someone who's like brand new to this and they're like, they're literally hearing about this for the first time, right? Like their Instagram feed hasn't been curated by the algorithm to biohacking stuff. And they're like, what is this? Where would you recommend they start? Obviously following you, right? But then like, what would you say would be a basic next step? Yeah. Okay. So I have a, a, a resource that I love. It is a hefty book. It is like back in like, if I were to go back to university in my bio class, it's like the, that is that textbook, really? but it's way more interesting. It's okay. a book called Boundless by Ben Greenfield. Oh. I think okay. of it as like my biohacking Bible. It okay. is everything from biohacking beauty to recovery, to longevity, to your gut health, to dopamine levels. Yeah. So if cool. you're like, Ooh, like I honestly think of it like as a coffee table book where I'll flip through, you know, one or two ideas and yes. then take it from there. But it's a, that's a great book. Another good um, resource is actually my podcast to becoming limitless. Yes. So in each episode, I'll take a specific hack, like cold exposure, or I will take a hack, like delaying coffee. And I will break it down, like why this works, how it affects your business and what you can do to get started on it. So if you're really just yeah. looking for like an audio digestible, I would start. Yes. There. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we will link to both of these in the show notes, both Boundless and Becoming Limitless. I love your podcast name so much, by the Thank way. Thank you. Okay, so how can you know everyone listening find you, connect with you, get more into your world? Obviously, your podcast. Where else can they find you and connect with you? Yeah, I'm active in my DMs on Instagram. So always feel free to message with comments and like, I love this. How would I improve this? What would I, happy to talk there. Um, but the best way to kind of get a, a starting point is my, I have a free playbook called 12 Ways to Biohack Your Energy. Ooh. That I feel are the most effective and fastest to get started with. So yeah. you'll get a little blurb on what it is. And every single hack links to a podcast episode that I've done that takes it way deeper. Should you want to explore that? So it's really Brilliant. all about better morning energy, more focus, and like having those high energy mornings. And you can grab that on my website at tanessashears.com, little freebies tab at the top, click it. You'll see it there. Yes. Awesome. Okay. And then your Instagram is just Tanessa Shears, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just my name. Yeah. Okay. So we will, don't worry, everyone. I'm going to like put all of this in the notes for you so you can easily click and access everything. Tanessa, I, I could talk to you for like at least another hour, but for the sake of time, I am so grateful that you were here today. You have so much wisdom, so much experience. And I think you're going to have to come back on the show once you start traveling. So we can actually like talk about what that's like. What do you think? Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. So 20, 2024, we'll do a okay. recap of like two months in Panama with, with toddlers. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Part two is coming everyone. Thank you again so much. 